now, please present and welcome to the floor, Jason Nias. He is going to be talking all around the great unserved market, which is the mid-market. So handing over to you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Uh, what a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, and I'm definitely not the CIA agent, just to get that out there. Um, so today, uh, I'm thrilled and honored to be representing Shopware. Um, let me go to the next slide. As the president and general manager uh, at Shopware, and I thought it'd be useful to really talk about three things. Number one, I, because it's part of the presentation, I want to give you an overview as to who Shopware is. So I'll give you an at a glance. Um, I want to talk about, as you talk, as you mentioned, the great underserved market in e-commerce, which is the mid market, and I'll kind of talk about why uh, and some of the things that we're seeing and sharing that with the community, uh, and then wrapping up. Uh, talking a little bit about, again, our company Shopware and how it satisfies some of those needs of that, that mid-market. So I'll try to be not as not super salesy, uh, and I'll try and keep this kind of focused on how that underserved market, why they're underserved, and, and, and solutions to that problem. So with that, uh, Shopware at a glance. Um, so Shopware is a German company, uh, but really that's just where headquarters are. Uh, we've got offices all over the world. In fact, one uh, recently opened here in New York as well. Uh, we're a technology company. Uh, we're, we're built for customizable commerce. Um, so you can access our solution either through APIs, you can use it as an open source product, or you can use its headless core. Um, Shop, Shopware allows you to innovate faster than any other platform. That's one of our hallmarks. Um, we believe in a best of breed approach. We don't believe in, in making our clients uh, pre-select who they use for say payments or fraud or tax or, or any other aspect of their go-to-market. Um, we integrate with virtually every major uh, technology firm and allow brands to use what they see fit as part of their go-to-market. Uh, and we're specifically designed for the mid-market. Um, with turnkey features that allow people to get more value out of the box uh, than any other commerce platform. In terms of some facts about our business, we're about a 450 plus to 500 people employed company. Uh, we've got 1200 different partners we work with. Uh, we grew 30% year over year uh, and we have 40,000 live customers using our platform. Uh, we process about $20 billion a year in gross merchandise value and we're recognized as Gartner as being one of the hot e-commerce companies in the industry. A little bit more about Shopware is we're ver we can cover any vertical. So we have customers in virtually every industry, including a lot of names you might know, companies like Philips or Staples or New Balance or Power Bar, or even companies like Ashton Martin. So you can see that we're not we're, we are able to serve a wide variety of customers of any, of virtually any size, as well as uh, any industry. So let's talk a little bit about the great underserved market in e-commerce. And first of all, we, we segment into SMB, mid-market, and enterprise. And we define mid-market as anyone doing over a half million dollars of GMV all the way up through 100 million. And people who are in the industry um, probably know why companies like Shopify have had so much success. They are relatively low cost to buy, relatively simple to own, relatively easy to operate, and they come with an ecosystem of partners that make it very uh, scalable uh, for people who use a product like that. And on the other end of the, of the paradigm, you've got the large enterprise companies who are doing more than $100 million in revenue. And those brands expect highly customized capabilities. They expect it to be feature rich. They expect to have complete brand control over every aspect of their, of their shopping experience down to pixel perfect execution. And they have to support generally things that are complicated, things like B2B and B2C use cases, some digital businesses, some physical businesses, um, selling products of different types and having ultimately control over all of those experiences. And that's why the mid-market is so underserved. 
It has the expectations on the low end of being all the things that a low or an SMB would be, meaning low cost, easy to use, et cetera. But it has the expectations that they're going to be a large enterprise and they have those complex shopping experiences and they need brand control. So as we look out uh, on the market, we see that the underserved market is really that mid market where they want to pay the price of an SMB with the feature and capabilities of an enterprise. And that's why I joined Shopware. I noticed by doing my own diligence that Shopware is purpose built to serve that market. In fact, um, if you take a look at some of the companies that are major players in these industries, you can see that some of the SMB platforms are stretching their way into mid-market. And you can see that some of the large enterprises are kind of pushing their way down into mid-market. And that's the dynamic that we're talking about that creates this uh, underserved market that is customers doing between a half a million and a hundred million dollars in GMV. We believe at Shopware that we're very well positioned for the fast growing merchants that are sophisticated in digital commerce that feel like they're potentially being underserved. We're, we, we serve brands like the ones I showed you before that are looking for a single commerce platform to help solve all of their challenges. We're looking for brands who have complex go to markets, meaning they have physical stores, social channels, mobile apps, all of that tied into an, uh, into a, a single e-commerce experience that ties everybody together and really puts the customer at the center of what you're trying to achieve. We want we work with brands who have a high requirement of flexibility, the ability to support different business models, um, different ways to access software. Uh, those are the types of companies that, that really we think are underserved. Um, we also want to work with brands who have a very strong, high sense of ownership, and they want to control every aspect of their go-to-market. Some e-commerce platforms, when you buy them, you have to use the payment infrastructure that they've brought with. And if you don't use it, you pay more fees. That's not the case here at Shopware. We want you to have every part of your experience to be controlled uh, all the way down because ultimately your brand is your brand and we want you to be able to deliver against that value. And finally, we wanna work with brands who wanna innovate fast. So we've got this amazing product roadmap uh, that allows people to add new features and functions uh, really, really quickly. And I'll talk more about that in a little bit. So when we take a look out at the market and what people are trying to go do, we look at how hard is it for companies to go and inter, uh, innovate. And on the high end, it's all around the customization of the capabilities that you need. Uh, we reviewed, a, uh, uh, we did a research project and analyzed the level of effort to uh, ramp up your team and, and basically run your store versus an SAP Hybris. And our teams produced, or our results were about two times that of, of a company like an SAP. We take a look at how do we uh, support our customers meaningfully in the markets at which they are. Um, Shopware has recently taken on about $100 million worth of investment from the Carlisle Group and PayPal. And the whole mission of those dollars is to take Shopware's solution, take it to the mid-market, and satisfy the requirements which we believe are underserved today. And so with those dollars, we're going to add resources, add partners, and basically increase our support level to service the U.S. Uh, and other parts of the world, as well as we serve Germany. Um, today, Shopware has about a 40% market share in Germany, which is where they're located. Uh, and we believe with the, this investment, it's going to allow us to take their great product, which services the mid-market at a high, high rate and pace, to the United States. Some examples of how we're doing that, it's by building out an enterprise partner network. And so if there are SIs, agencies, or technology companies who'd like to work with Shopware or understand if there's a potential partnership, we'd love to speak with you. Number three, number three, 
We believe that Shopware allows you to be three times faster by adopting innovation than any other platform. We believe that the way that we deliver our technology, either through APIs, through open source, or through a SaaS model, gives our clients the ultimate flexibility to innovate at the rate and pace of their business, not be heavily at reliance on other e-commerce platforms. Examples of that is Shopware is the leading open source commerce platform that serves the mid-market. We are the leader. We've got off the shelf tools, which are as good as any other commerce platform. And we've just recently launched some guided shopping, uh, which is really, really powerful. And I'd, I'd recommend you take a look at it. So that was my 15 minute over of overview of Shopware and why do we believe the mid market is underserved and why we believe Shopware is the right solution to serve that market. Now, I wonder if there are any questions or anything that we can take. That was incredible. Thank you so much for that, Jason. Um, I, have, I have a couple of questions for you. Um, you mentioned there open source, and I think to a lot of the community, you know, that was a word that we we spoke about um, maybe five, six years ago with the, you know, the original e evolution of commerce. Do you see that that is making a real strong comeback um, as the market has migrated towards SaaS? And how do you see that structuring the product delivery that will come out of Shopware? Great question. Yeah. So, so the answer is um, open source is going to be here for a very long time. It is uh, one of the preferred delivery methods or ownership models for brands uh, and, and, and effectively agencies as well. Um, so in our, our view is that um, we are going to be the open source leader. We're going to own that market and we're going to give people the greatest open source product and e-commerce that there is. I'd encourage you to join Ben Marks's presentation this afternoon. He's going to speak a lot more about that. Um, ben Marks is uh, chief evangelist here at, at Shopware. Um, but more importantly, I think I think uh, SaaS is obviously here to stay as well. Um, and you know, you look at what's happening in the emerging technologies inside of e-commerce. You, you see these these headless e-commerce players gaining steam. Um, that's absolutely here to stay. You think about SaaS and you think about open source. These are all very viable models. Uh, and it really comes down to the, to the, to the brand and the system integrator or agency that companies use as to which one is right for them. So here at Shopware, uh, we're going to, we offer customers the opportunity to work in any of those environments. We have a platform as a service offering, a SaaS offering, as well as an open source offering. And what's powerful about it is it's all the same core engine. So customers can decide how they want to go to market and use the technology that best fits their needs. And and as a German platform, what's the yeah. work that's gone in from, from Shopware to bring this product to the Americas, localize it? And I'm thinking tax and shipments. And you know, um, my assumption is, is that Shopware is very much ready to serve the US market now. And there seems to be some significant investment that's gone in there over the past couple of years. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it's a it's a cultural shift um, to, to be really dominating in a market like Germany, where, again, they have a 40 percent mm -hmm. share uh, and trying to take that offering to other markets. Just as hard as it is for a company to go from SMB to mid market to enterprise or the other way, it's just as hard for a culturally uh, focused company like Shopware to go to the U.S., um, so, so the commitment these guys have demonstrated to do that is, is a couple, number, uh, a, a few things. Number one, um, they've transitioned the official language of the business to English. So mm -hmm. every meeting that you're in, English is the primary language being spoke around the world at Shopware. Uh, number two, um, they've went off and hired evangelists and people who know the industry and what it takes to be successful and competitive, people like Ben Marks. Um, number three, I mentioned it, but we got this uh, pretty big investment by the Carlisle Group and PayPal to really take this product and build it purpose-built to serve the U.S. market. Um, that is the largest market that was previously served by Magento, uh, Magento One, um, and that is the market that we are building 
a product and solution to really go address. Uh, and then number four, um, myself joining relatively recently and us building out a team uh, to really service the U.S. market and give it the support and the expectations uh, that brands need and expect. Um, here, at, here at Chopware, we, we believe in trust and we believe that um, we're going to deliver a really high value for a really great price uh, and we're going we're gonna to do it openly to, use the, to overuse the pun because we're open source. That's a very good pun. I like yeah, that. Good. <laughs> my mind. Um, and, and you touched there, um, and I'd, I'd love to dig a little, a little deeper. You touched on culture. What are those kind of cultural adjustments that have, I guess, happened for business, not just through, through, through language, but through how you present yourself to market? And I guess also the reverse is true. For yourself as a leader, have you had to culturally adjust to fit into the more Germanic way of, of doing things? And where do those two kind of uh, uh, poles collide? Well, when I was in the process of trying to figure out what my next move was going to be, I went to Germany and met the team over there. Mm -hmm. And um, the one thing that really stood out to me is how strong the culture is. It, it is built upon their core values. And the first thing you see when you go in the building is the core values. And in every meeting I've been in so far, they live them. And so to me, um, it kind of doesn't matter whether you're Germanic, whether you're American, whether you're Latin American, wherever you're from, if those core values of the company are being lived and demonstrated and prioritized, um, they kind of they kind of cross those borders easily. And that's what's happened so far for me at Shopware. Um, they care deeply about the people, mm -hmm. um, deeply about getting the hires right. Um, we believe that if you hire the right people and you give them the right OKRs, um, they'll achieve them. So haven't had any conflict with or, or challenges or collisions in terms of culture, um, because I think kind of going in, you know what they stand for uh, and, and you get to decide whether you want to stand for that as well. So I haven't had any of those cultural challenges. Incredible. And, and as you've now nailed those core foundations of the platform and the market readiness, where does the investment get driven into now in terms of the product feature set? Are we talking omni-channel, social commerce? Where do you see those market moves happening and where you're channeling the shopware product set towards? Uh, great question. I'm probably too early to give you a really good answer from my perspective. I know we have a great answer, uh, but I'm, I, I can tell you this. Um, part of the investment is going to go into really great people here in the United States to build out a really robust go to market. Part of that investment is definitely going to go to making sure that the right technology vendors are available for our new customers. Um, so what payment types, what fraud engines, what social social media platforms, what advertising platforms, all of those uh, kind of top tier US based technology partnerships, that is a huge priority to make sure we get right and we get it right in the right order. And I guess that that goes into the, the concept that you spoke of, of building out that developer community as well, right? Um, I've, I've recently seen this through the guys that were behind the Magento platform, you know, have started to regroup and regalvanize, right? And almost build out those independent entities again, which is really garnering the developer community back together in a shape that was kind of missing for a few years, right? Um, so right. It, are, are we gonna see some more community engagements and interactions from Shopware in that space too? Tons of those. That's probably our Amazing. number one expense from a go-to-market perspective is feeding the community, giving them both a platform, but also driving the community and the engagement to bring our people together, both physically and digitally, to really innovate what is the e-commerce industry. So absolutely, yes. Huge, huge aspect of what we're trying to invest in. And uh, you mentioned earlier uh, that, that Ben will be a huge part of that, I expect, as we go into 2023 as well. Yeah, Ben's really our trail guide um, from the, the the ecosystem, what we need to build, why we need to build it, um, who we need to partner with. Uh, yeah, so he's and and he's got um, a very large network that's uh, from the Magento community. 
Uh, and so making sure we take all of the greatness that that occurred historically and recreate it in, in the new lens that Shopware is, is, is hosting, that is what we're working on. Fantastic. Now, my last question, just, just as we kind of wrap up, because I think it's a bit of a misused term and misinterpreted across the world, is what is the mid-market? What does that what does that really mean? And I guess if you can help define that mid-market concept, because I think it's more than just dollars, right? It comes down it to the maturity of operations and teams and uh, percentage of revenue, things like that. And then following on from that, when is the right time for someone to start looking at shopware? When is that kind of migration point and that natural symbiotic space of, I think I need something new and shopware could be the answer for me? Yeah, well, the first one I'll take, listen, if you're a simple business trying to do any number of gross sales volume through your platform and you've got a small number of SKUs, you only sell direct, um, you don't have retail, you know, there's probably not a strong use case for change for you. Um, uh, the power of the SMB platforms really probably take care of the large majority of what you need. So really, you know, we use revenue as a pretty simple guide to tell people what the mid-market and what the enterprise and the SMBs are. But really, it comes down to some, some level of complexities of use case. Mm -hmm. um, and I'll give you an example. So, so there are companies here um, who have six to seven, maybe holding companies is a perfect example, where these holding companies really want to standardize on a single technology stack, be it commerce, be it CRM, be it ERP, be it anything. And they want to get to less technology that's running more of their core business. In those types of scenarios, when those six businesses all look a little bit different, some are pure play B2B, some are B2C, some have subscriptions, some have warranties, whatever those examples might be. When you start to build that level of complexity of how they want to use them, the products they're trying to sell, the geos they're trying to sell it to, that's when you start to get to this complexifier that is a mid-market or an enterprise commerce platform that you have to look at. Historically, what people do is they go from the SMB solution to holy cow, we have, we're complex, and they go and they buy the most expensive thing they can find delivered by a very expensive system integrator, and they pay for the nose for something that they could have probably gotten a little bit a better value on with a product like a Shopware. So the answer to your other question is, when should people start to look at Shopware? Well, if I'm a Magento One user who's effectively has to do a massive forklift upgrade to get to uh, the Adobe powered commerce suite. That's point number one. You should absolutely be looking at a shopware in that environment. It's built to service effectively the same market with an open source go to market solution with a lot of the same tech vendors. To me, that becomes this immediate path to being on a product that is supported and growing and evolving versus being kind of stuck in, a, in an unsupported product. So that's number one. Um, I'd say number two uh, is probably uh, in line with what I described before, which is customers who are really kind of feeling the pain or the inflexibility or the, I feel like I'm in too many templates in an SMB solution and I, and I wanna see what's out there. In those environments, uh, we become an unbelievable value uh, in, in most cases, our research shows that we're cheaper than virtually any other commerce platform. So we think we're more feature rich and we think we're cost less, uh, which is a pretty powerful combination. And that cost less, is that an implementation cost or the lifetime value? Uh, well, it's it's kind of a combination of both. We, we think the customers or the SIs and agencies who do the implementations of Shopware, it's a fraction of what it is to do some competing solutions. Uh, but we also know that the cost and fees you pay to Shopware is a fraction of what you pay to the other commerce platforms. So it's a both and not an or. So we believe we're more efficient in both regards. Okay, very last thing before we wrap up. Um, quick 30 seconds where you think retailers should be focusing their energy for the next 12 months in the current market conditions. Finding efficiencies, automation, finding ways to do more with less. Um, that is the world we're living in and, and uh, uh, yeah.
that, that that's my answer. Incredible. Thank you so much, Jason. Um, obviously, Jason's from Shopware, guys. If you want to find out more, shopware.com or drop us a DM and we can make those introductions for you. Have a fantastic day, Jason. Thank you so much for opening the summit with us today and we'll catch up very soon. Honored to be here. Thank you so much.